cars, but at the same time, we will be streaming live as we always do on the Lord's Day, on our worship day. So you still have the privilege to uh, uh, go on Facebook, YouTube, amen, uh, and uh, tune in. Uh, even in your cars, you'll be able to do it if you drive up. Good evening, Lou Andre. Amen. Glad to know you're tuned in this evening. And we're praying it'll be good weather on Sunday so that we will be able to have good fellowship in our cars. <laughs> this is a new day, and we are making adjustments as we go. God has tr called for this transition. God has called for this change, and we must adhere to, we must humble ourselves and uh, be fluid and be willing to do whatever is necessary, amen, to be his representatives in these most difficult days. I say they are challenging and un in days of uncertainty, but yet God is steady and steadfast. He's sure you can count on him. He, he simply says that we need to trust in the Lord Hey, Pete, uh, with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. There's just some things that we'll never be able to understand about God and, and the ways of God. But the only thing we can do is just acknowledge him in all our ways. Amen. In all our ways, it says to acknowledge him. And that simply means put God out front. Put God at the head of our pathway. Acknowledge him. Let him guide us and direct us. Amen? Yeah. And uh, even through these times of uncertainty, even through these uh, times uh, 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 of uh, going through waters, uh, traveling through uncharted waters, because we've never been here before, uh, there used to be a song that we used to sing, years ago, and it was um, uh, about, uh, oh gracious, I, I started thinking about it and I lost it before it even got to me, amen, uh, the old ship of Zion, yeah, the old ship of Zion, we used to sing that song years ago, and uh, talking about uncharted waters, but God is the captain of our ship, and as long as God is the captain of our ship, Amen. It can be uncharted waters for us, but we know he's going to take us through to the other side. So let's just keep Jesus on board our vessel. Let's keep, let's keep Jesus on board our ship, and he'll take us through these times of uncertainty and times of uh, challenge, challenge, challenges, and he will make sure that everything is going to be all right. For us, let's let's pray, Father. Thank you once again for the privilege and for the opportunity of uh, uh, sharing your word, Lord. Uh, sharing your word to the New Sardis family and to the worldwide web in general, Lord. To who whosoever is watching, we thank you for them and we pray your blessings would be upon them, O God. Let your blessings. Amen. Be manifest in their lives. Even, Lord, from the time, during this time that we're sharing your word with them. May your spirit be present, Lord. May they sense your peace, your joy. May they sense your presence, my Father, while we're teaching and sharing your word. Help them to open their hearts, O oh God, and help them and help them to hear what you would say to them from your word this evening. Anoint them, anoint me for this time of studying your word and we thank you in advance for it for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Hey Sue, how you doing Sue? Good to know that you're tuned in this evening as well, amen. Again, Friday was a huge success of COVID testing 
We even got uh, someone was saved uh, during that particular event because we have faithful evangelists. We have a wonderful ministry of evangelism, and they were on their job uh, on Friday to the extent that someone acknowledged Christ as their Savior, which made the whole thing, amen, worthwhile. All right, let's go to the Word of God. This evening we are in uh, the epistle of First John, the epistle of First John, chapter 4, and uh, I don't know how far we'll get through uh, this, um, these, uh, this chapter this evening, but we will uh, share, as we always do on our Monday Bible study, the verses that we are hoping to cover. Amen. And from the King James Version, uh, starting at verse 7, it says, Behold, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. And uh, verse 10 says, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son uh, in, uh, sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Amen. That is from the King James Version, verses 7 through uh, 10. From the NLT, uh, we read these words. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God showed uh, how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world. So that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent him, or rather and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Amen. The NLT does not use the word propitiation uh, for our sins in verse 10, but simply says uh, God sent his son his only son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. And we know that uh, 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 propitiation simply means an atoning sacrifice. Good evening, uh, Reverend Buckingham. Amen. Uh, propitiation means to appease. And Jesus appeased the wrath of the Father by giving his life. Amen. To pay for our sin. That, that's what propitiation means in this text. Uh, good evening, Lena. Good to know you're tuned in this evening. Now, we have a wonderful text of scripture to look at today. Amen. It can bless your heart if you truly know the God of love. I mean, not... not uh, um, uh, 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 hypocritically uh, having a relationship with him, but having a real authentic relationship with him, this text can truly bless your heart. Not not somebody that's perfect. Um, okay, the word just don't want to come this evening. Uh, but somebody that's perpetrating uh, the way of Christ, perpetrating the way of uh, Christianity. Uh, but this, 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 this text this evening is truly where the rubber meets the road. Amen. 
But I want to start by asking you the question. And you can answer it right there where you are. Good evening, Bill Sparks. Answer the question right there where you are. Uh, what, what, what is love? What definition would you give to love? And I guarantee you if I could uh, poll every one of you right wherever you are, that I could probably hear something different from each one of you. <laughs> yeah, I remember during the uh, during the eighties. I don't think it was necessarily initiated by her, but there was a trend that was going on that uh, caused her to write a song, Tina Turner, and her song was entitled "What Does Love." <laughs> What does love have to do with it? <laughs> if you are a child of God, I want to respond uh, to to her idea of what love is. Uh, that is, love has everything to do with it. If you are a child of God, it has everything. But how would you How would you define love? I, I know you all have a different answer, probably for what it is, but. Uh, Listen, in the English language, when we talk about love, let me just read the, the verse 7 before I say anything else. Verse 7 says in the King James, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God, hallelujah, for God is love. <laughs> Yes, he is. God is love. And so he says, uh, if you've been born of God, we need to be about loving each other. Now, the problem we have uh, in understanding this text, I mean really getting down to the nitty gritty, is really defining what love is before we move on uh through these uh, uh, passages of Scripture. Now, it, unfortunately, in the English language, there's only one word for love, okay? I love my wife. I love my husband. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. I love my dog. I love my cat. I love ice cream. I love iced tea. I love peach cobbler. I love peach pie. <laughs> Good evening, Brenda. I love, I love my car, okay? I love my job. One word in the English language for love, L-O-V-E. But thankfully, in the Greek, there are various terms that's given for love so as to help us to really understand when we use the term love what we are t what we're talking about or how we're trying to relate as far as love is concerned to the thing that we're talking about and so in the greek terms there are four terms for love you have you have a uh, 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 stage you have phileo you have eros and then you have Agape, okay, uh, all different terms of love, and but you you would use those different terms based on uh, to whom or to whatever you are referring to, okay, and so uh, I, I'll give just a touch on each one of those loves, all right, but uh, for uh, for the love that John talks about here. In this text, it is uh, agape, amen. That's the love that he's referring to in this text, amen. Agape love, which is a divine love, <laughs> amen. It is a divine love. It is a love that's not focused on itself, but it's, it is a love that extends outwardly, if you will. All right? 
and and it is the kind of love that God has, as the scriptures say, uh, uh, demonstrated toward us. It's the agape, the divine love, if you will. Okay? Hold, hold, hold on just a second here. I'm trying to do something. Um... Uh, Okay, yeah, yeah, here we go. So, so, so when we talk about the love that uh, John talked about, it's a love that uh, pertains to a very unselfish love. Now, this love is described uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13, good evening, Elder Poole, uh, it gives us, what love, how love is to be manifested in our lives. It t it's talking about the divine love, okay? And listen, number one, we, we have to understand that divine love is not uh, focused on self or itself, okay? Divine love, is, is, it, it always has as an objective an outreach, okay? An outreach, not an in-reach, all right? Now, let's think about it from a uh, God, Trinity, Trinitarian perspective, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, okay? Now, okay, uh, these, are, these, are, these are three in one. That There's one Godhead, but there's three in that one. We... We understand the tr Trinity. I hope you uh, uh, believe in the Trinity this evening. Uh, Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, if these three are one, but yet they are three distinct, okay, how do they function in terms of love? Yeah, I'll put it on there. Okay. All right, and, and uh, so so. Now the father never focused on itself. Never, the father always points to uh, the son. Okay, if if you try to say God the Father, you are all of it. No, he's going to say, no, it's it's my son. I uh, put it all in his hands uh, in Colossians chapter 1. Uh, God the Father put it all in Jesus' hand. It's all about Jesus. He said, no, don't look at me. You look at Jesus, okay? All right. Now, if you try to look at Jesus and try to make him uh, the, the, the sum total of it all, Jesus is going to say, oh, no. It's not about me. It's about my father. <laughs> it's about my father. It's always an outreach, okay? Now, if if you get to the Holy Spirit and start talking about the Holy Spirit, oh, man, the Holy Spirit is just, you just all of it. Da, 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 da. Holy Spirit is going to say, no, no, no. You need to go back to the Father because the Father sent me to do what he wanted me to do. You get the point of what I'm trying to say that they will never focus on themselves, all right? They will always point to the other. Do you not see that that is the kind of love that we should have within the body of Christ, within the Christian fellowship? So much so, the love of God should so permeate us as such that our love should flow over into the outreach for the world, okay? And that's why uh, uh, John chapter 13 says that uh, by this shall they know, okay? The Bible said the world is going to know <laughs> if we are functioning based on the divine love. The world is going to know that. By this, sh they shall know 
that you are my you are my disciple if you have love one for another. So we we are to demonstrate the kind of love that is demonstrated in the Godhead, if you will. So that's divine love. That's the love that John is talking about. He's not talking about uh, eros. Okay, hey Talana, good to know you're watching. He's not talking about eros. Eros is a uh, physical kind of, sexual kind of representation of love, okay? A lot of times when young men tell young women, you know, oh, I love you, I love you, baby, all they're saying is, I, I want to have sex with you, I love you, I love you, oh, I love you so much. All they're doing is appealing to them on a sexual a physical, emotional side. That's eros, okay? That's physical. Kind of. Then there's the uh, phileo. Phileo, and you know what phileo has reference to. Phileo has reference to uh, Philadelphia, right? Uh, uh, yeah, it has reference to uh, Philadelphia. A brotherly kind of love, okay? Uh, a love that you have for your family, for your wife, your husband, your children, your grandchildren, a, a brotherly kind of love, okay? And if you would ask uh, uh, different uh, people, uh, do you love your mate? They would say love. Yes. You ask them, do you love your children? They'd probably say yes. Do you love your grandchildren? They'd probably say yes. Brothers or sisters, on and on they would go and saying, yes, I love them. But listen, unless they have the divine love that comes from a relationship with God, they cannot be talking about the ultimate kind of love that John talks about here in this epistle. Amen. I, 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 can, I can talk about this from a, a, a personal standpoint in the sense that, uh, you know, Iris and I, we've been married now uh, over 51 years. Praise God. I'm not taking no credit for it myself. <laughs> hey, Gladys, good to know you uh, out there this evening. You know what I'm talking about. You've been with yours for 50 years. I've been with mine for over 50 years. But here's the thing. Uh, I, I loved Iris when we first got married, okay, those early years, but I really didn't know divine love, okay? So, yes, I loved her on one level, and, and that's the only level I could have loved her on, all right? But after uh, this is, uh, 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 after uh, uh, developing a relationship with Jesus, this is, this is, this is uh, uh, a kind of experience that uh, initiated in me, amen, a, a opportunity to know divine love to the extent that I loved Iris after that in a way that I never really knew that I could love her, all right? It was totally different. I still loved her, okay, before, but after I developed a relationship with Jesus Christ, that love went to another level. I can't even explain it in terms of the vast difference that it made because God had deposited his love in my heart. Good evening, Derek. God had deposited his love in my heart. And so now I'm able to love her with a God kind of love, with an agape kind of love. It went beyond the phileo. It went, be, went beyond the stargate. It went beyond the phileo. Now we're on a totally different level altogether. Now I can understand uh, Ephesians chapter 5 uh, when it talks about loving your wife as Christ loved the church, and gave himself for it. <laughs> Bless you, Brother Buckingham. Yeah. 
So I, I, I knew it on a totally different level. Yes. And so we get back to this, get back to the text here when it talks about, says God is, 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 is love. And we, we understand now. He, we're talking about divine love. We, we're talking about the unconditional love. We're talking about a love that only comes when one has been what? Born again. Uh, according to uh, John chapter uh, 3, okay, around verse 5 down through that, he said, ye must be born again. And uh, it is only when you are born again that God has now uh, the, the privilege and the opportunity to deposit in our hearts his love. Amen? His love comes as a result of being born again. Now, the text, the verse, verse, verse 7 says, God is love. Now, which means love doesn't define God. God defines love. <laughs> God is love. God is love. So God defines love. Love doesn't define God. All right? We have to, we have to understand that because God is love. All right? Now, it, it, how can we say we love God and we don't love our brothers and our sisters? Well, that comes on a little later on in the text. We'll talk about that a little later on in the text. But here it says, God is love. Okay? God defines love. His very nature is love. His sum total is love. That's who he is. I mean, he doesn't have love, you know, the way we 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 have. You know, today we may demonstrate it. Tomorrow he may not demonstrate it. You know, he may show it tomorrow. He may not show it. He may not show it. No, God is constantly manifest the fact, manifesting the fact that he is love. Everything he does toward us is based on his love, based on who he is. He's love, all right? Now, if we have his love, uh, 1 Corinthians 13 ought to shine forth in us sometime. What does 1 Corinthians 13 say? Well, you can look at it for yourself uh, and read it. But it says, love is kind, love is patient, <laughs> okay? Love does not is not puffed up does not does not uh, um, bond it itself doesn't rejoice in evil but rejoices in good. There is a character that's associated with divine love that ought to be manifest in our lives. Now that's what he says in verse seven, beloved. Let us love one another. Let us, us, who is us? Us being the body of Christ. Beloved, a, a term of, of endearment. Beloved, let us love, who is he talking to? He's talking to the people of God. Let us love one another, for God is love. If you're born again, we have the capacity to love each other in a way that demonstrates the fact that God is in our lives. And he says, and everyone that loveth is born of God. Now, fact of the matter is, if you don't demonstrate the love of God in your life, chances are you don't have God in your life. All right? Yeah. He says, uh, and everyone that is loveth is born of God. Back to John Chapter 3, and not only is born of God, and knoweth God, okay? If you, if you are demonstrating the character of divine love in your life, then that is the evidence that you have been born again. So the first thing he talks about, in verses 7 and 8 is uh, the proclaiming 
the source of this love that John is talking about. He proclaims the source of the love. The source of the love comes from God. You don't, you don't get this love from anything or anyone else. You have to get this love from God. Amen. And the only way you're going to get it is to be what? Born again. Uh-huh. Born not, not, uh, 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 not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Born of the spirit of God. Okay? Now, uh, I, I dare say, and, and I do say, I dare say, uh, that there are a lot of people that who profess to be, who is a part of the physical church, that's not necessarily a part of the spiritual church of the body of Christ. Why? Because it's not manifest in their life. That love is not manifested in their life. When they have been born of the Spirit of God, okay, that love is going to permeate from their lives in some kind of way, okay? Because they know. Listen, people, people, people join, well, when we were in that kind of physical fellowship, people joined the church for all kinds of reasons, okay? And we need to understand, joining the church is not necessarily joining Jesus. Yes, being, being a part of the physical church is not necessarily evident that you are part of the spiritual body of Christ, okay? And so you see people within the, uh, 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 the, these people within the physical framework of the church doing all sorts of stuff, okay, for various reasons. I mean, hateful, hating. I mean, just go to Ephesians chapter 5, you can see the works of the flesh, and you see the works of the flesh being demonstrated in their life as opposed to the works of the spirit that's supposed to be uh, permeating from their lives, you know, and you can see it clearly when you know the word of God, all right? And so if you're going to have this love, you've got to, first of all, be born again. So he proclaims the source. The source is God, okay? The source is God. And if we're going to have it, we must be born again. Then he, he goes on to amplify the, defin, the defining of the children of God. That, that's what he does. He goes on to define that. See, you are either a part of the family of Satan, or you are the, a part of the family of the Savior. That, 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 no, no, no. There's no middle ground. That, that, well, you know, I, I, I've been born again, but I make, make some mistakes. Well, everybody makes mistakes. That's, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about demonstrating the pure, unadulterated love of God that is deposited in our hearts through being born again, which gives you the right the, and the privilege and, the, and everything else you need in order to manifest that love in your life. Okay? So if you can't demonstrate love, it means you don't have the divine love of God. Amen? Yeah, you've got to demonstrate it some kind of way. And uh, when you come into the church, when you, when you unite with Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, the reason that you should be doing it. See, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Uh, uh, people used to join the church because they had a fight with their mate. They join the church because they're down on their luck, as it said. Uh, they're down and out. They don't have a job. They're sleeping in their car. You know, they're just going through some difficult times. And so they come to the church and they hear the love of God poured, poured out through the, through the word. You know, 
or even through other people who know God with demonstrated love. And so they migrate toward that kind of love, but and they'll join the church. But but they never join Jesus. Okay? And because they never join Jesus, they never have the uh, opportunity or, or even the privilege or the desire to manifest that divine love that's in their lives. And a lot of times, you know, when they come in and when they don't come in because they acknowledge the fact that they are a sinner and they need Christ in order to save them and they ask him to come into their life and save them because they are a sinner, because they don't do that, then they are not effectively and rightly born again, okay? They're not born again. And if they're not born again, they don't have that love that John is talking about right here in our text, okay? And so John says, uh, 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 we ought to, <laughs> we ought to love one another simply because uh, 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 we say we're born again, God is love, and we ought to manifest his love, amen, if we claim to know him. He says, verse 8 says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Now that's pretty cut and dry, isn't it? That is straight to the point. That, that, that gets right down to the bare bone, right down to where the rubber meets the rope. That doesn't even need any expositional uh, uh, or defining in terms of what John is trying to say here in this text. It's very clear. He that loveth not, <laughs> he that agape not, <laughs> not he that eros, phileo, or stage not, but he that loveth not divine love, if you don't demonstrate that kind of love that John talks about here uh, in the previous chapter, in uh, John 10, John 3, uh, John 3, 14, I believe it is. John 3, 14, 1 John 3, 14. And it says, how dwell the love of God in you if you see your brother in need and shutteth up your bowel of compassion. Now, he says, D divine love can't be in you. <laughs> Agape love cannot be in you. All right? When you when you see your brother, he says, see your brother, have need, and, and don't do anything to try to help out, okay? And that can be very expansive now. That, that you know, I know we kind of uh, usually kind of confine things to what we think that text is saying, but that text can be as broad as you have time to talk about it, okay? Uh, uh, 1 John chapter 3, uh, verse 10 or verse 14, can't recall right now, but it says, uh, uh, if you see your brother in need and, and demonstrate and, don't, and, and, and you don't even close up your bowels of compassion, how can the love, divine love, be in you? It can't be. God sees us in our needs, and he has to respond to his children. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? Listen, we're in COVID-19, and he knows that we are. He knows that we are in need. He knows that we're in quarantine. He knows that we're going through very difficult days, you know, being separated from all of those things. That we, he knows what we are going through. And God has not closed his ears to our prayers, uh, shut his eyes to what we are going through. Hallelujah. God is going to come through for all of us. He's going to show us how all of this stuff worked together for our good because he loves us. He can't do anything but that. That's all he can do because he is love. He can't do anything less than demonstrate his love toward us. So he's going to, even what we're going through is because of his love. I don't understand it. You know, I asked the church the other day to, uh, the, 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 the Christian fellowship to talk to me about the positive things 
that COVID-19 has done. Don't think about the negative stuff. And there's enough of that to go around, enough accusations to put on everybody's doorstep. But don't focus on the negative. Think about the good things that have occurred in your life that, that's occurring, that's going to occur based on this COVID-19. Why? Because if we are a child of God, God can't do anything but love us. And even now, he's loving on us. We just don't understand how he's doing it. It's just like when our parents, when we were children, and our parents was telling us they were doing what they were doing for us because they loved We didn't understand it. But after we got older and had children of our own, we came to understand why our parents were doing and saying the things that they were doing. Listen, we need to mature. We need to grow up spiritually and understand that these things are not happening to us because God doesn't like us or he's tired of us. No, he's doing it because he loves us. I just don't understand it, but I trust him. Do you trust him? God is love. Not no physical, not even uh, brotherly, certainly not emotional or sexually. God loves us with a perfect love. Is that not exciting to know that we have a God which beside thee there is none other? That he is God. <laughs> Everything, all the other gods are little G gods that we serve a God who loves us truly. How do I know it? How do I really know he loves us? How do I know it? Because God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Oh, hallelujah. He sent his son and his son died for us that we might live eternally in glory with him one day. That's how I know he loves us. He gave his life. He did do it. He gave his life. That we might understand the love of God. And so he says to us, Beloved, let us love one another because God is love. Amen. He is love. He that loveth not knoweth not God. That's just cut and dry. If you don't demonstrate his love, you don't know him. I don't care how good you sing. I don't care, I don't care how well you serve in ministry. Hallelujah. I don't care how good you can preach or teach or what you know. It does not matter if you don't demonstrate God's love, then you don't know him. I wish I could say that. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you just don't know him. That's it. Cut and dry. Right to the point. If you don't demonstrate his love, you don't know him. I don't care what else you do. Doesn't matter what else you do. John was straight to the point. If you if you if you don't demonstrate the love. Toward particularly the body of Christ, the household of faith. If you don't demonstrate that love toward him, you've not been born again. And you can't demonstrate love if you've not been born again. But if you're born again, you have the capacity to show it to the world. What did James, James chapter 2 say? James said, you, you show me your faith without your works. And I show you my faith by my works. In order, you tell me you love me, okay, that's not sufficient. But I'll tell you I love you through the way I treat you. <laughs> that's how we know we love one another, by the way we treat one another. By the way we are concerned about one another. And, and, and you know, God, God, God is the kind of God that has love that's manifested in the fact that he has no respect of person. 
You never find God in a clique. <laughs> you never find God hanging out in a clique. The only clique he'll be hanging out in is the clique of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and his children that's demonstrating his love. That's the only clique you'll find him in. But oh, even that God manifests love to the world. The Bible says he reigns on the just and the unjust. His, his love is, is so vast, it's so great. Hey, you know, it spills over even into the world. But we are supposed to be demonstrating his love so much that they see in us that God is real. God is real through the way we treat each other. Hallelujah. What's up, Rock? And so if you, if you don't love, you don't know him. If you don't love him, you don't know him. I'm not talking about this hypocrisy. I'm not talking about this pretense, this make-believe. I'm talking about the real deal. You don't pass me up. If you see me broke down on the side of the road, <laughs> if you if you see me, in, I ain't, I don't even have to tell you I have a need as a child of God. He says, if you see your brother have need, that's how it's demonstrated. And, and he says, by this shall all men know. By this shall the world know. By this all men know. That you are, um, you make God real. You make God, you make the invisible visible when you demonstrate his love. And the only ones that can demonstrate his love is those that have been born again of his spirit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I got carried away here. Hallelujah. And so you only have two. Two different crowds here. You only have the children of Satan or the children of the Savior. That, that, that's, they, they, there's no middle ground. I don't care what nobody says. Amen. Satan has children. The Bible refers to him as the father of lies. So if he's the father, it means he's got children. We know Jesus have, have children. <laughs> Those have been born again. Uh, uh, of uh, John, St. John chapter 1 said, to as many as received him, to them he gave, gave the power to become sons of God, children of God. He gave you the power. In other words, he, he gave you what you needed to be adopted into his family. Good God, I'm about to get happy all by myself up in here. I think I hear my wife hollering in the other room. But anyway, <laughs> uh, God is love. Now, that was the proclaiming the source of love. Let's look at the purpose, purpose of the source. What's the purpose of, 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 the, of the source? Huh? What's the purpose of the, of the source? Verse 9 and 10, he says, in, in this was manifest the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we, 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 he's still talking about the people of God, that we might live through him. That, 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 that's the purpose. That we might live through him. See, see, all of this stuff that the Bible talks about, the preacher preaches about, the teacher preaches about in terms of works and the service, doing good, all this kind of, it is impossible for us to do it without Jesus or the Holy Spirit being the source. If he's not the source, it, it can't happen. The best it can be is hypocrisy. And you know, and, and now that I'm talking about, it, you see, Satan can duplicate everything. He can duplicate singers. <laughs> yeah, they can sing. Sure, they can sing. Sunday's best. <laughs> you didn't say that, Tatum. Yes, I did, too. 
Sunday's been. He can duplicate everything. He can duplicate uh, preaching. He can duplicate teaching. He can duplicate service of all kinds. But the one thing that Satan cannot produce is the love of God. Now, you, you can hypocrite. People can hypocrite all of they want to. They can all, they can sing the horns off the billy goat and back on again. They can preach till the walls begin to vibrate. They can do all of that. Oh, what great, and then they can come out and not even speak to you when they get in the car. Why? Because they think they're all that. that that's not the love of God. Uh-uh. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, Sister Gladys. If it's on the inside, it has to work itself on the outside. I hope you're still listening, Jessica, because that used to be your song, Something on the Inside that's working on the outside. If it's, if it's on the inside, it will manifest itself on the outside. Hallelujah. I think some of y'all are trying to get happy with me this evening. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. God's love is, is, is for us, who is his children, to demonstrate it to the world. Okay? And listen. Okay, we have it all when we are born again. He gives us everything, but we have to grow into it. You, 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 you have to have it, and if you have it, you will grow in the relationship. Okay, his love, God's love, cannot lie dormant in our lives and not grow. Peter talks about that a little later on. Uh, uh, rather, uh, he talked about it in, in his epistle. Peter did. He talked about how that we should add to uh, the various uh, 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 character, uh, the verse character of Christ in our lives. We should add to it, you know, constantly adding to it. In other words, constantly growing in it. All right. And, and at the conclusion of that, character that he talks about, we should be growing in. He said, if we have this, we shall never falter. Okay? We will never falter, he says, if you have, uh, if you grow in these things, you will never fail. Yeah, you'll never fail. And so, we got to have it, but we also have to grow into it. Let me give you a challenge. Let me give you a challenge. Let me give you a challenge. I, I, I would like for you all to uh, mentally or physically, either one, write down uh, some things or persons or uh, organizations, whatever the case may be, write down three things that you really don't love. <laughs> hey, write it down. Write it down. Three things you don't love. Boss on your job. <laughs> three things you don't love. Three things you... You just can't stand. You can't do. Uh, uh, maybe somebody say gays. Uh, somebody else say Republican Party. <laughs> somebody else might say Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, somebody you done cussed out on Facebook <laughs> or Instagram. <laughs> uh, something you just don't love. You don't love it. You know you don't love it. You know you can't. You're having a problem dealing with it. You've been praying about it because you're having issues with it. Listen, write it down physically or mentally in your mind. Now, accept the challenge of loving it. Accept the challenge of loving them, that, or persons, persons, place, or things. <laughs> uh, uh, you challenge yourself to love that which you know you don't love. And guess what will happen? Yeah, here's what's going to happen. And this is why I want to issue you this challenge. If you acknowledge that, that you, you, you're halfway home when you acknowledge, no, God, I don't love. Listen, and you don't, and, and you, you, 
God already knows you don't love it anyway. He knows you don't love them or her or him. You don't love them. And he already knows that. But now, acknowledging it, you're halfway there. Secondly, remember this. When you overcome the challenge of loving that which you know you don't love, you will be demonstrating what? The love of God. Lord have mercy. You'll be demonstrating the love of God when you love that which you know you don't love. And yet you show your love toward that entity, toward that person, toward that organization. Where you act toward them the way God would act toward them. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Love is of God, and he that loveth not knoweth not God. Remember, the whole book of First John is about an in intimate relationship with Jesus. It's about a right relationship, amen, with Jesus. It's about having fellowship continuously with Jesus. There's some people that I ask, uh, some, you know, uh, uh, and, you know, we have a tendency of doing this. We ask them, uh, how are you doing today? And they'll say something like, oh, uh, I, I, uh, I, uh, I'm doing great. I'm just enjoying Jesus. All right. That, that statement, whether it's right or wrong, that statement is the way we should be uh, functioning every day of our lives. We should be enjoying the fellowship, the relationship of walking with Jesus. Every day of our lives, we should be cognizant and conscious of the fact that Jesus is with us and we should be enjoying him. We should be enjoying him, 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 him. Jesus every day of our lives, okay? The more we are depleted of, of, of what we, we should have, he would be constantly replenishing. If we are walking in fellowship with him, he's replenishing, amen. As it's depleted, he's putting it back in, okay? And we can continuously represent him in this dog, dying, discouraging, dismal world. We can represent Jesus. We can show the love of God to the people in this world. We can demonstrate God's love. No matter how bad it gets, we can still demonstrate God's love because God is in us and he'll give us the power to demonstrate that love. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it on our own, but we have to depend on him. So, John talks about, first of all, in, in, in verse 7, uh, proclaim, he proclaims they are the source of this love, and he even goes into it a little bit in, in verse 8. But then, uh, when he gets to verse 9 and 10, he starts talking about the purpose of this love, the purpose of his uh, proclaiming this love, and that is so that we can manifest the same uh, to the world. Amen? Verse 8 again. He that loveth not knoweth not God. God is love. Verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. <laughs> In this, what? This sacrificial love that was demonstrated by God. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. I told you it is through him that we do this stuff that I'm talking about. We can't do this on our own. You know, the best we can do is uh, air us our wives and uh, phileo our wives, uh, uh, a stog our wives. If we don't have agape, that's the best we can do. That's the best we can do. 
But when we have agape love, let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It, give me your ear. I want I want you to hear this. And I just gave you a challenge about loving three things that you know you don't love. Asking God to help you to love it. Okay, it, it, He'll do that. But let me let me say something. Those of you that are married, those of you that are in a marital relationship, okay, and, and I'll take it even further. I'll say those that are, are going in a kind of, uh, what do you call it? I, I don't want to say the words that I use because I'd be dating myself, you know, talking about courting and all this kind of stuff. But those of you that are in a relationship with uh, the opposite sex, okay, uh, to whatever extent that it is, if you're in a relationship with them. Listen, I'm talking primarily about marriage, though. That is the best relationship and the best opportunity for spiritual growth. Because both of you tend to, on various occasions, and I hope less than more, uh, have a tendency to rub each other the wrong way. And it becomes a challenge for you to continue to love each other. Okay? Uh, and, and like I say, it don't necessarily have to be in a marital relationship, but that would be the, uh, the ultimate of the kind of relationship that I'm talking about. You all, we have a tendency to help each other grow spiritually, okay? And that's the only way we can grow in our love is to be challenged by those who on occasions do not necessarily demonstrate that love toward us, okay? And, and, and in order for us to grow in any relationship, we have to come in contact with or be face to face, face to face with the opposite of what we are attempting or trying to do. It grows us. Amen. I, I talk about that more uh, on next occasion as we continue to talk about the love of God and how we are to manifest that love in our life. If we're not, if our love is never, never challenged. How can it grow? That, that's the question I'm on, I want to leave you with tonight. If, we, if our love is never challenged, how can we grow? Amen. And I'll pick up right here next week from uh, verse, verse, verse 9. Verse 9 and 10. Amen. That's where we are. I, I, I usually can't get where I really hope to go when I do Bible study because the Spirit comes in and He does what He wants to do and I don't hinder Him. Amen? I don't hinder Him. I let Him do what He wants to do. I don't care what I have written on the paper. You know, I let God do what He wants to do and say what He wants to say because He knows who's listening and He knows what they need to hear. So I let Him have His way on what's being said. So we'll pick up here, verse 9, write it in your Bible, Remember, we go verse by verse, word by word, phrase by phrase. We're we in no hurry, amen, to get through God's word. Uh, but just put a little check there in 1 John chapter 9. Next Monday, we'll be right back here again talking about this same text. Good evening, Kim. Good to know you're tuned in. Uh, Sister Gladys, uh, Mars, Pat, y'all have a wonderful evening. Uh, wonderful evening. It's been kind of cloudy and rainy here uh, today, but yet we know the sun is shining. Amen. <laughs> if we had a, a a 747 and we could take off up through yonder's clouds, we could still see the sun shining. So we know the sun is still shining. Amen. Hallelujah. And we rejoice in that fact. <laughs> Amen. Again, I'm glad, so glad for y'all having tuned in this evening share with us in this little Bible study setting. Amen. Praise his holy name. And we shall uh, 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 continue 
in the Word of God. Let us uh, close in the Word of Prayer uh, tonight. Okay, don't forget about Sunday. Drive in church, 9 o'clock a.m. 9 o'clock a.m. before it gets too hot outside. Hopefully we'll have good weather. <laughs> you love the rain. <laughs> okay, you must not have been visited. You, you don't have a relationship with Arthur <laughs> and Rumor. <laughs> hey, man, let us pray. Uh, have a, you have a great night too, Jess. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of your word, studying your word, uh, allowing us to look into the uh, law of liberty, Lord, and we pray that it's been liberating for somebody tonight. And Lord, that it will find good soil uh, uh, to be planted within the hearts of of those who've listened, Lord, and it will spring forth and bring bring forth great fruit that will be glorifying to you and would be magnifying to your name and to who you are. Bless everyone that was under the sound of my weak voice this evening. Give them a good evening. Continue to bless them. Let me stay focused on you. Remember the sick and afflicted everywhere. Bless the bereaved families. Remember those who are incarcerated. Remember our governing leaders. Oh, God, we pray for every household that's listening. We pray, God, that you would keep us in your loving care until we meet again is our prayer in Jesus' name. Good night, everyone, and may heaven smile on you. I do love you, every one of you, and I thank God for the love that he deposited in my heart to love you no matter what. Amen. Have a good night, and we will see you, amen, on Wednesday. Lord, say the same. Bye-bye.